up, fellow students. Now, if you're like me and you've <clears throat> misplaced your Macbeth notes, I suppose fair is fair after all. Thanks to my friend Imogen and her Macbeth study guide, we might yet pass this test. Also, after this, you should uh, further your education by watching the overly sarcastic production's summary of Macbeth for a good laugh. Anyway, without further ado, the pinch of salt school summary of Macbeth. So, beginning at the start, as one does, Act 1, Scene 1 depicts some witches around the pot stirring away at something hot. Thumbs up to those who get that reference. And by now, the terribly cliché setting of the dark and stormy caliber, we know that this isn't going to end well. Theme, Weevil. And an inexplicably important one-liner is Fair is foul and foul is fair. Like all the actual medicine these days. Another possible theme, the supernatural. For scene two, we get our first descriptions of Macbeth, which will change throughout the play due to his descent into evil. He is described as brave Macbeth by the captain and as a valiant cousin, worthy gentleman by King Duncan, which is opposed to later by the Fiend of Cawdor and Black Macbeth. The dramatic irony in this scene is that the previous Thane of Cawdor is to be executed. Oh, oh. Duncan says, What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. Much like the defence against the dark arts teacher at Hogwarts, the irony created is that it is shown that the Thane of Cawdor is bad news, and later so too Macbeth whose deception to the king outweighs the prior things. In scene three, the most important event is the three witches greeting Macbeth as All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, and then each say Thane of Glamis, Thane of Cawdor, and That shalt be king hereafter. Which, as we know, totally won't go to his head when he becomes the Thane of Cordor. But because this is Shakespeare, we can't get away without roasting Banco. So basically, he won't be king, but his seamen will. In the same scene, after the witches vanish and Macbeth receives good news, he rants at us in typical Shakespearean soliloquy that basically shows us what's going to happen. The swelling act being him killing Duncan and becoming king. It also shows the appearance versus reality, with the what if ill and what if good and the imperial connotates king. He also mentions the theme order versus chaos with against the use of nature. Scene 4 has an ironic comment from Duncan about how he was betrayed by someone he trusted Oh, the foreshadowing. Some themes are Macbeth's ma ambition, which temporarily falters when Duncan says Malcolm will succeed him, and a darkness when Macbeth shows his black and deep desires. Macbeth wants to cut himself off from the light, or the good. Scene 5 shows Lady Macbeth reading Macbeth's letter, reverse dissing her husband by saying he's too kind, summoning demons to unsex her and make her strong enough to do these malicious deeds and begin to concoct a scheme. Some themes include equivocation or appearance versus reality in Lady Macbeth's line, look like the innocent flower, but the serpent lies under it. And good and evil, for Lady Macbeth is a good wife, but she also assists in Duncan's murder. 
some good reading in this scene Macbeth's soliloquy oh sorry Lady Macbeth's soliloquy or as I like to call it the unsex me speech scene six starts with the ironic awe of the beauty of the of Inverness Macbeth's castle with Duncan himself saying word count increases such as the castle hath a pleasant seat the air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses, which aids itself to the appearance versus reality, seen with no little amount of dramatic irony, as this will be his deathbed, as it were, ahem, uh, killed in his sleep. This also alludes to how Macbeth breaks the natural order by killing the king. Macbeth's paranoia makes its grand entry in scene seven, in his long haul soliloquy where he thinks the bloody instructions shall return to plague the inventor, and that his vaulting ambition which overleaps itself and falls on to the other, the themes you should now be well versed in. Ambitions and appearance versus reality. A good one liner. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. Some crucial events, the death of Duncan draws ever close now, and Lady Macbeth coaxes an initially decisive Macbeth into killing Duncan. Okay, well, now that Act 1 is done, in... in... I need to take a break and study some less divine poetry. Ugh! And so, if anyone wants me to attempt a poem or two on the channel, let me know. Otherwise, see you in Act 2.